Hello and welcome. In the previous lesson, we have looked at how to successfully install PyFluent. Let's now move on to discussing the different ways to launch an ANSYS Fluent session via PyFluent. We will also explore a quick and easy way to learn and write PyFluent commands using the PyFluent journaling feature. Additionally, we will discuss the two different approaches to writing commands and interacting in a PyFluent session. Excited to start? Let's begin. First, let's see how to start a PyFluent session. Let's go ahead and open the command prompt. For that, navigate to a working directory of your choice and type in cmd in the address bar and press enter. Type in Jupyter Notebook and click enter. This will open a Jupyter Notebook session. Create a new notebook by clicking on New and then on Python 3. Let's start by writing the code to import the PyFluent core package with an alias as PyFluent as shown here. To run a certain line of code, just click Run or press Shift plus Enter on your keyboard. After a line of code is executed, the pointer moves to the next cell. Now, let's start an ANSYS Fluent session and assign it to a variable named session. To do so, execute the code session equal to pyfluent.launchfluent. This will launch ANSYS Fluent in solution mode in the background without opening the GUI session. To exit the session, use the exit function as shown here. To instead launch a GUI session of ANSYS Fluent, you can use the show GUI equal to true argument. To open ANSYS Fluent in Meshing mode, specify the mode equal to Meshing argument. If you don't specify any mode, ANSYS Fluent will open in Solution mode by default. To specify the number of processes and precision, you can make use of processor count and precision arguments respectively as shown here. We are now ready to set up the simulation using PyFluent. Before that, Let's see how we can learn some PyFluent commands. The quick and easy way to learn and write the PyFluent commands is by using the PyFluent journaling option. PyFluent journaling allows us to record the TUI or GUI based interactions and operations performed in an ANSYS Fluent session and get the equivalent PyFluent commands. Starting with the ANSYS Fluent version 2023 R1, we can record PyFluent commands directly from the ANSYS Fluent session. All TUI based interactions and commands can be issued in ANSYS Fluent and can be recorded and converted to PyFluent commands using PyFluent journaling. Additionally, GUI interactions in the ANSYS Fluent meshing mode are also supported and can be converted to PyFluent commands when PyFluent journaling is enabled. Let's now see how we can record a PyFluent journal script using an example problem. First, open an ANSYS Fluent meshing session. Let's activate the PyFluent journaling option using this command. Give a file name of your choice and hit enter. You should now see a new Python script file located in the working folder. For this demo, we will simulate a static mixer problem that has two inlets and one outlet. We will create a simple mesh for our problem. In the meshing session, since both GUI and TUI based interactions can be recorded, we will use both interchangeably for demonstration purposes. Start by choosing workflow and then importing the geometry. We are not adding any local sizing, so let's generate the surface mesh. Our geometry consists of only one fluid domain, so select this option. Now skim through these tasks. Let's add boundary layers and generate the volume mesh with the default settings. Once the volume mesh is generated, let's check the quality of the mesh. We see a minimum orthogonal quality of 0.2, which indicates a sufficiently good mesh. Let's now switch to solution mode and set up the solver settings. As mentioned earlier, GUI interactions in the solver mode are not supported. For that reason, we will be sticking with the TUI interactions. 
Note that the Pi Fluid journaling, which we turned on earlier, is still active even after moving to the solver mode. For this demo, we will use the default SSTK Omega model for modeling turbulence inside the static mixer. By default, air is assigned for fluid region, but we need to use water for our demo. So, copy water liquid from fluid database and then assign to fluid zone. Now let's assign velocity inlet boundary conditions for both the inlets. Let's perform hybrid initialization after this and then go ahead and run the simulation. After the simulation is complete, let's stop PyFluent journaling by using this code. Let's now open the recorded PyFluent journal script, which is a Python script. You can see every command from the meshing and solver sessions have been converted to PyFluent commands. But this script cannot be used directly to run a PyFluent session as we need to add certain lines of code. Remove this access code at the top and add this set of commands which imports certain packages required to run the code. In the end, we can also add solver.exit round brackets for exiting an ANSYS Fluent session. Now let's open a new Jupyter Notebook session and see how to execute the journal we just recorded. Paste the code we have now. As you can see here, we have grouped some of the codes and have kept them as separate cells. This will help us understand each line of code and comprehend each step in the process of setting up a problem. We also have added markdown cells in between to describe each group of codes. For this demo, let's run all the codes at once. To do that, go to the last code and use the run all above command to execute every line of code until this point. While the codes get executed one by one, you can see ANSYS Fluent is launched, meshing is done and all the solver settings are carried out identical to how we did when we meshed and set up the case manually. Next up. Let's learn a little bit more about the ways to interface with ANSYS Fluent within a Python IDE. As we discussed earlier, PyFluent is a set of APIs used to interface with ANSYS Fluent from within a Python environment. This lets you control ANSYS Fluent through any Python IDE like PyCharm or Jupyter Notebook. This library is open source and the source code is available on GitHub along with the documentation. There are two ways to interface with an ANSYS Fluent session using PyFluent commands. One is using the TUI API and the other is using the Settings API. TUI API is analogous to the TUI commands used in the console of ANSYS Fluent. Using the TUI API, you can fully control an ANSYS Fluent session from meshing to post-processing. If there is a TUI command for an operation in ANSYS Fluent, there will be an equivalent TUI API command for that operation in PyFluent. On the other hand, Settings API is analogous to the object tree in ANSYS Fluent and is more Pythonic in nature. However, as of version 2023 R1, it is still in development and doesn't cover all settings, so you may need at least some of your commands written with the TUI API. But soon, this will be the go-to approach for scripting in PyFluent. Let's start an ANSYS Fluent session using the Jupyter Notebook and see the two methods to interface with ANSYS Fluent. Let's start by importing the necessary packages. For this demo, we will be using the PyFluent core package. Execute this by pressing Shift plus Enter. Now that we have imported the package, let's launch an ANSYS Fluent session in double precision with a processor count of 2. Specifying the mode as solver launches the ANSYS Fluent in the solution mode. Setting the show GUI argument to true will launch the live session of ANSYS Fluent so that we can get a visual confirmation of the codes we are running. After executing the code, you can see that an ANSYS Fluent session is launched in the working folder where the Jupyter Notebook was opened. Now let's read a mesh file. Here, let's use the settings API method. Settings API method is analogous to object tree 
So to read a mesh, we can follow the same steps as we do in the graphical fluent session. That is, code to file, then read a mesh. The settings API code also looks very much similar to this. When you execute it, you can see the ANSYS Fluent console output is displayed in the Jupyter session. You can also see the same happening in the ANSYS Fluent session. Now, let's define the units for the problem involved. For that, let's use the TUI method of defining units. TUI command in the console for defining the length as mm is this. Similarly, the TUI API command used for PyFluent will be solver.tui.define.units and inside round brackets, we specify the variable and its units. Note that there is no settings API command to set up units. Let's now set up the viscous model for this problem. We will set this up using the two approaches. Let's set the viscous model to be k epsilon by using a settings API command. This is the code for the settings API and it looks similar to the object tree that is setting the viscous model under the model section which is under the setup section of the object tree. Execute it and in the ANSYS Fluent session we can see the viscous model has been changed to the k epsilon model. Let's now change it back to the default k omega model using the TUI approach. The line of code is similar to what we use for the TUI commands as you can see here. Let's also define boundary conditions using both approaches. Let's start with the settings API approach. Let's change the velocity magnitude for velocity inlet 1 to 2 meters per second. Now let's use the TUI approach to set the velocity magnitude of velocity inlet 2 to 2 meters per second which looks same like TUI command. From these examples, it is clear that the TUI approach is similar to the TUI console approach and the settings API approach is analogous to the object tree. Let's summarize what we learned. In this lesson, we learned how to launch an ANSYS Fluent session through PyFluent, explored a quick and easy way to write commands using PyFluent journaling feature and finally compared the two approaches, that is, the settings API and TUI API to interface with ANSYS Fluent using PyFluent. That brings us to the end of this lesson.